Hi everyone. In this lecture, we will talk about linear convolution using tabular method. So basically, you have to determine the convolution sum of two sequences, and the two sequences are given as x of n is equal to 4, 2, 1, 3. So this term is what at n is equal to zero, right? And the second sequence is what h of n, which is given as 1, 2, 2, 1, and this arrow represents what the term at n is equal to zero. So we have to perform the linear convolution, but this time we have to use tabular method. So before going ahead and seeing the steps which are involved in the tabular method, let's see the starting and the ending point for y of n. Means the convolution sum result, starting point and the ending point. Fine. So length of x of n. If you see how many samples are present here, four samples. So length of x of n becomes what? Four samples. Length of h of n. Again, four samples. Four samples, right? Let's say this is equal to what n one, and let's say this is what basically n two. Now the length of the resultant sequence. What is the formula for this? It is n one plus n two minus one. So n one value is four, n two value is four minus one. So it is eight minus one. So basically what seven, seven samples. So basically y of n. Will have how many samples? It will have seven samples, boss. So it will have seven samples. Now let's calculate the starting point and the ending point. We got to know about how many samples the resultant sequence will contain, and now it's the time to calculate or to see what is the starting sample and what is the end sample. So x of n starts at n1 so if you see x of n it starts at what boss n is equal to 0 and h of n starts at n is equal to minus 1 right so you can write it here that x of n starts at n1 is equal to what 0 and h of n starts at n2 is equal to minus 1 now therefore the starting sample of y of n will be equal to what So it will be equal to n is equal to n one plus n two. So basically zero minus one, so minus one. It means starting sample of y of n is what you will get at minus one. N is equal to minus one. Clear? Now let's calculate the next. So y of n end at n is equal to what? So you already know about the formula. So n one plus n two plus capital n one plus capital n two minus one minus one. Okay, so it will be what? This is what minus one, and this is what basically seven, and this is minus one. So it will give you n is equal to five. Otherwise, it is easy, right? Other approach is what? So basically, you know the starting point is minus one, and it contains the se seven samples. So the end point will be what five? N is equal to five. So y of n will have seven samples. That is from n is equal to minus one to n is equal to five. So hope this is clear to you. So it is helpful when you go when you want to compute the result. So it is helpful for you. You know, okay, boss. This is the starting point, and this is the end point. I have to check only between this point and at this point. Clear? Now let's go next and understand the steps which are involved in the tabular method. Fine. Now let's start. So basically, to perform linear convolution using tabular methods, the following steps should be followed. So first step is what? It is common step first. Right? See, change the index from n to m and express the sequence as x of m and h of m. Right? At present, in the question, the sequence is given as x of n and h of n. Right? Simply, you have to change the index and you have to express it as x of m and h of m. 
where you have to express i will i will tell you just for now just understood you have to do like this now second step represent the sequences x of n and h of m as two rows in a table so what you have to do basically boss you have to create one table so if you see here i have created one table all right and the first row is occupied by value of m because now the index is changed to m so this is my m now what is our step so we said like express x of m and h of m you know in the two rows so here i am representing x of m and here i am representing h of m and let's see the value so x of m starting point was what zero right so see m zero what was the value boss it was four right two one and three correct am i right so let's write here x of m this is equal to what 4 comma 2 comma 1 comma 3 and let's write h of m it is what 1 comma 2 okay comma 2 comma 1 right so basically you have already represented x of m and this is what nothing we are not using this now h of m so h of m is what boss so this unfold unfilled boxes means uh, considered as zero zero value okay so h of m so it is starting from m is equal to minus one right so minus one m is equal to minus one the value is one then two two one and rest of the places you can mark like this dash otherwise you can keep this empty also no worries so x of m and h of m is represented now let's go and understand step number three so if you see step three so it is saying like fold one of the sequences for example h of m to obtain h of minus m so now i am going to fold one of the sequence which is what h of m so when i fold this i will get what h of minus m okay so i have to fold means now the starting point will be th this way right so now this value i will get at what so h of minus m so i will get this at minus 2 because for now it is at n is equal to 2 now i will get this same value at minus 2 so now 2 now here 2 now 1 so this is what h of minus m i have simply folded this that's all clear okay now what we have to do we already know the values of n okay so the starting point is what n is equal to minus 1 2 n is equal to 5 am i right so let's deal with n is equal to minus 1 so when n is equal to minus 1 what will be the value of second part of h of n minus m that is the convolution formula right so that time h of n minus m right this is what minus 1 minus m clear so basically this we already know right now the next step see the fourth step so basically what you have to do shift the sequence h of minus m q times to obtain the sequence h of q minus m so if the q is positive shift the sequence to the right and if the q is negative shift the sequence to the left this you have to understand okay so basically q is what n is equal to q means we are standing at which instant that is actually q so here it is what minus 1 represents the q so n is equal to minus 1 so it becomes h of minus 1 minus n so here the value of q is what negative so shift to the shift the sequence to the left 
okay boss so you have to shift this sequence to the left so when i shift this sequence to the left what will happen this will go here then two then two then one right simple okay now let's check at n is equal to zero so n it n is equal to zero h of minus m you will get simply right n minus m so n is zero so h of minus m h of minus m we already know so just write it as same two two one dash 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 clear now let's go to for the next sample so n is equal to one we have to go at n is equal to two we have to go at n is equal to three okay we have to go at n is equal to four and we have to go for n is equal to five these things we have to check so n is equal to one so it will become what h of one minus m n is equal to two it will become h of two minus m then it will become h of three minus m it will become h of four minus m h of five minus m and all these values are what all the values of q here is what positive so if it is positive it means what shift the sequence to the right right you have to basically shift the sequence to the right now let's see so this is our h of minus m now it is 1 minus m so we have to shift the sequence to the to the right am i clear so this sequence will go one unit by right so this will start from here 1 2 2 1 right now if you see h of 2 minus m now this will shift to the right so it will come here 1 2 2 1 now h of 3 minus m now this will shift to the right so it will start from here 1 2 2 1 now h of 4 minus m so shift to the right so start from here 1 2 2 1 same h of 5 minus m so shift to the right so 1 2 2 1 the rest of the places are what dash dash you can place no worries otherwise you can keep it as empty it means what this unfilled boxes in the table are considered as zero it is clear to you how we are solving this right so that that is what present here so this is step four we have already did now the sample of y of n at n is equal to q is given by we already know this formula it is a convolution formula okay now calculate the product sequence for one period then what you have to do basically in step six sum up the samples of the product sequence to obtain the sample y of q and then repeat the above procedure for all possible values of n to obtain the sequence y of n so don't worry i'm going to show you this how to achieve this so basically let's go to the final conclusion and let's calculate so i hope this table is clear to you so if table is clear you can easily understand next of the things so the starting value of n is minus one right so when n is minus one so y of one becomes what this am i right so if you see here x of m is involved and h of minus 1 minus m in is involved so what you have to do basically check where is x of m boss so x of m is present here right these are the values and where is h of so x of m is this and h of minus 1 minus m is this so check the common points where this both are defined so it is defined as m is equal to 0 so at m is equal to 0 the value is 4 and it is what 1 this is the only common point so 4 into 1 4 so here 4 so the result is what basically 4 into 1 what is 4 so y of minus 1 we calculated as 4 now let's go to the next so y of 0 we have to calculate so when n is equal to 0 y of 0 becomes this so x of m into h of minus m okay so let's go and check this also so this is x of m and this is what h of minus m so what are the common points here see 
when both are defined so i can see it is defined at m is equal to 0 and m is equal to 1 so 4 into 2 8 so here you can write 4 into 2 okay plus what are the next samples we are talking about this right so 2 into 1 okay so 2 into 1 so overall it becomes what 4 to the 8 plus 2 so basically 10 now i hope you understood how to solve this now when n is equal to 1 so y of n 1 becomes what this see here which term is involved x of m and h of 1 minus m now go back again so this is x of m this is x of m right and h of 1 minus m is here present here right so basically you have to check here what are the common points where both are defined so i can see it is defined at m is equal to 0 m is equal to 1 and m is equal to 2 so let's calculate so 4 into 2 8 so first is what 4 into 2 second second let's check for the second so basically 2 into 2 4 okay so basically 2 into 2 you have to do here now next go for the next so here it is also defined 1 into 1 okay so 1 into 1 so overall 4 to the 8 plus 4 plus 1 so 13 clear now when n is equal to 2 so when n is equal to 2 then what are the terms which is involved here so x of m and h of 2 minus m so you have to do the same so here it is 2 minus m here it is x of m x of m and 2 minus h of 2 minus m see the common points so okay 0 1 2 3 4 common instances we got so multiply it and sum up multiply it and sum up so simply you have to do that so what you will get 4 into 1 plus 2 into 2 plus 1 into 2 plus 3 into 1 so overall you will get what 13 so you have to follow the same for rest of the things also all right so when you calculate when n is equal to 3 so follow the same so when n is equal to 3 so what are the things that you have to consider first h of 3 minus m so here it is h of 3 minus m and original x of m so here it is x of m check the common points so common points are what m at m is equal to 1 and at m is equal to 2 and at m is equal to 3 so multiply it and sum up with another clear so overall you will get here what you will get here it is at n is equal to 3 right so 2 into 1 plus 1 into 2 plus 3 into 2 overall you will get 10 now same do for n is equal to 4 you already know this is present and this is present in our table so check the common points of m where both are defined multiply it and sum it like this so so basically you will get here 1 into 1 plus 3 into 2 means 7 now when n is equal to 5 so you know these things so it will give you only one common instance okay so 3 into 1 which is what basically 3 so y of n you will get as 4 comma 10 comma 13 comma 13 comma 10 comma 7 comma 3 okay starting point is what n is equal to minus 1 so this is what at n is equal to 0 so this is our final result i hope this thing is clear to you that is what i said in the step number 6 so if you see step number 6 so first what we are doing we are calculating the product sequence this for one period then sum up the samples of the product sequence to obtain the sample y of q that is y of n at n is equal to q that is what we did right and then repeat the above procedure for all the possible values of n to obtain the sequence y of n so hope this method is clear to you it is the easiest method so if you have any doubt in this tabular method linear convolution using tabular method you can ask in the comment section thanks for watching